Hi, today I'm going to read a book called Bullfrog Pops. It's written by Rick Walton and illustrated by Chris McAllister. Now what the author does at the end of the sentences, the last word is bold-faced and then I don't know if you can see, there's three dots at the end. Those are called ellipses. And what that means is, it's not the end of the sentence, it's going to continue on. Now the author here kind of fools us because based on our prior knowledge of what we think is going to happen, he changes it up a little bit. So when I get to these, the end of these sentences, I'm going to pause and let you think what you think is going to happen next. You'll be surprised. Once there was a bullfrog who hopped a stagecoach and rode far away. After many miles, he came to the town of Ravenous Gulch. Bullfrog was hot. He was dirty. He had not showered in many days. And he smelled. What do you think is going to be next? And he smelled pizza. Bullfrog was hungry and he'd eaten all he'd eaten for days was one horsefly. He followed his nose to a sidewalk cafe where a man sat eating a large hot pizza. <coughs> Name's Bullfrog, said Bullfrog. Mind if I have a bite? I'm starving Marvin, said the pizza eater. He held out his pizza. Eat. Your heart out, Bullfrog. You're getting none of this. <coughs> That's not neighborly, said Bullfrog, and he grabbed the pizza and leaped away. Give me back my pizza, you ornery varmint, yelled Starvin' Marvin. He chased Bullfrog. Bullfrog tried to hide. The pizza but it was too big to hide so he ate it mm, you pickle skinned pizza thief yelled starvin marvin i'm still hungry yelled bullfrog as he leaped over starvin marvin and hopped away bullfrog hopped to a garden where there was a large watermelon bullfrog loved watermelon so he picked it Hey, you melon, melon filchin fly trap, put that down, said an old man with a pitchfork running toward Bullfrog. Behind him was Starvin Marvin. Bullfrog dashed the watermelon to the ground and gobbled up the juicy insides. As the gardener and Starvin' Marvin drew closer, Bullfrog leaped off. Stop him, yelled the men. I'm still hungry, yelled Bullfrog. He hopped until he came to a bakery. Ah, bread, said Bullfrog. And he grabbed an armload and leaped out the door. Then he heard the order. Hit the dirt, you loaf-lifting cousin to a grasshopper. Bullfrog turned. The baker was aiming a slingshot at him. Bullfrog dropped. I think what what would be next? Bullfrog dropped the bread, all but one big loaf, which he ate as he raced down the street. Stop him! Yelled the baker. Stop him, yelled the gardener and starvin' Marvin. I'm still hungry, yelled Bullfrog. 
Bullfrog raced away, but when he looked back to see who was following him, wham! He ran into an apple tree. Oh, moaned Bullfrog, where am I? You're in trouble, that's where you are, said Starvin Marvin. Double trouble, said the gardener. You're heading to jail, said the baker. You're under my apple tree, said an old lady with pruning shears. Bullfrog was surrounded. He began to shake. The tree. Apples fell down. Bullfrog caught dozens in his mouth and swallowed them. Stop eating my apples, you can and mouth fruit catcher, shouted the old lady. But Bullfrog jumped over her and away. Stop him, yelled the people. I'm still hungry, yelled Bullfrog. Bullfrog hopped until he came to the ravenous gulch fine groceries, fine dining, and fine art emporium. The food inside smelled so good. He hopped inside and looked out the door and down the street. A crowd of people was racing toward him, waving weapons. Oh no, said Bullfrog, and he bolted. The door shut and began to eat. He threw everything he could find into his mouth. Hot dogs and hot tamales, French fries and fried chicken, soda pop and popcorn, potato chips, chocolate chips, even wood chips. He hopped so quickly from food to food that the building shook and the pictures fell from the walls. And then Bullfrog noticed he wasn't alone. Sitting quietly at one of the tables was the sheriff, who stood up and rested his hand on his holster. Bullfrog, he said. Draw. Up a chair to my table and let's talk. Bullfrog sat down. Now, Bullfrog, said the sheriff, what you've been doing is serious. You're gonna hang. Uh-oh. Those pictures back up. I see, said Bullfrog. I see. Donuts! And he grabbed one off the sheriff's plate and ate it. The, the door burst open. In stormed Starvin Marvin, followed by the angry crowd. Where's my food, roared Starvin Marvin. How am I supposed to practice for the county super eater contest? Starvin Marvin grabbed a donut off the floor and stuffed it in his mouth. He began to choke. Bullfrog. Stop, yelled the sheriff. You're not thinking straight here, Marvin. For 20 years, you've tried to win that eating contest, and we're mighty grateful for your effort, but you've never won. This year, though, said the sheriff, we're going to enter someone new, someone who can out-eat anyone in the county. Why, he can out-eat anyone in the state and probably the whole country. Marvin, Bullfrog's gonna put Ravenous Gulch on the map. As the sheriff spoke, the townsfolk gathered food for Bullfrog. Give him anything he wants, they yelled. Great, said Bullfrog, because I'm still hungry. And he started eating again. Does he look bigger to you? Asked the baker, handing Bullfrog a plum pie. He won't burst, will he? Asked the old lady, giving Bullfrog a basket of peaches. Just might, said the gardener, handing Bullfrog a bunch of grapes. And then Bullfrog popped.
bullfrog popped a grape into his mouth and he was full. No more, he groaned. Bullfrog, said the sheriff, because you've eaten so much of our food, you're gonna have to pay. Us a visit next week for the County Super Eater Contest. Come hungry. And he did. Did that story end how you thought? Especially when I think many readers thought when the author put, and then Bullfrog popped. But he really popped a grape in his mouth. He didn't pop. I like this story. I hope you did too.